Hey guys, Automated Garage back today and it is a hot one out here in the shop. We got a 05 F250 60 crank no start hot. So what are we gonna do, Lee? Pull the airbox off and the We're gonna get everything ready to pull off so that it'll still run. And then we're gonna get the oil all the way up to temp until it is a crank no start hot. And then that way you gotta do a minimal amount of work to get the IPR pulled while it's still hot. We can air test it. And then the air tester is going to point us on the which side or what we're going after. We're going to pull that off and then it'll probably still be hot enough to air test it. That's the easiest way to find a leak on them hot. So Lee's going to get busy pulling all this stuff off. We'll crank her up, let her run, and then air test it through the IPR. All right, so we have been running here for a little while. Oil temp is starting to get up there to where it's going to do it. Here's what I'm wondering about. So ICP steadily been dropping at idle, but this is all the IPR will do. That's not me. She's about to cut off here in a minute because it was like one. I did this yesterday and I had something else come up and I didn't get to finish it yesterday, but it was in the 190 range is when it turned into shutting off and being a crank no start hot. So I'm really wondering if we got an IPR problem because with it being this low, and you can tell it's steadily dropping at idle and not maintaining the ICP. You ought to be able to get that to, to go above 70%. No matter what you do, and even driving it yesterday when I drove it hard, I could not give it a, get it above 70%. So it should be doing all that it will do to try to keep it running. All right, a few more minutes. I'm going to see if I can make her die revving her up. And it may not die sitting there not being under a load. There it is, I just missed it. I don't like his oil temp sitting here at idle. I also wonder if his fan's doing the right thing either. Because I had a uh, fan circuit code on here also, but we'll check that after we get this crank no start hot address. So let's see what we make on ICP trying to crank her. Two hundred is what she'll make. So now I get to get up here and not burn myself. Get the IPR pulled and air tested. So we got the IPR back down. It is still sitting down there. And screen stuck in there and like I said I ran this thing y'all saw the temps so it's still really hot so I can't get a pick down there to get the screen out so this is what I came up with just took a pick zip tied it electric taped it and that'll grab that screen and allow me to pull it out I don't know if y'all can even hear that I don't really think we have a high pressure oil leak so you do an air test it's normal to have slight air leaks at your upper injector o-rings uh, just because they're meant to seal oil pressure. And none of them ever usually seal up 100%. So this is kind of re-emphasizing my thought on the IPR being at 70%. So I really think what I'm going to do before I bust anything down is we're going to put a new Motorcraft IPR in it. We're going to run it, do the same thing, and see if we still have a crank no start hot. And I really think we're not going to. But uh, time will tell. This is part of the diagnosing thing. There's no sense in him wasting money with me busting that apart if that's not what the problem is. So throw IPR on it. Got one here. Um, worst case scenario, we pull it out and put his factory one back in and uh, don't charge him for an IPR. But that's kind of how we're going to eliminate that because that IPR should be at 70%. I mean, should be at more than 70%, especially if it's supposedly working to build oil pressure. And they don't always, even though it says it was making 70%, they may not be truly being 70%. So we'll see. All right, we got our new Motorcraft IPR. There's your part number there. Nice, pretty IPR. We're gonna stick that in, retest, see what our IPR percentage is then and see if we still have a crank no start hot 
or not. All right, IPR is on. You can see our engine oil temp is still almost 135 degrees. So let's see if we got a crank now. It's got air in the system, so it probably will be a long crank. And now the IPR goes to 84 like it's supposed to. It's got to pump the whole system back up a little. There it goes. I'm going to let her sit here and idle for a minute. And then we'll get it all the way back at the temp, see if we still have a crank no start hot or if we got our problem solved, which I think we're going to since the IPR says it's doing the right thing. All right, I think we corrected our problem because oil temp's up, which I am not happy about that oil temp sitting here, not even under a load. And we got that much separation. So, you know, if you tow with this thing, it's only got 150,000 miles. It is studded, EGR deleted, uh, tuned, but uh, it's probably never had an oil cooler done, I would imagine, with 150,000 miles, unless they did it when they did the head gasket job, which is a smart thing to do, but she's probably due for an oil cooler, looking at that. But I think we corrected our high pressure oil pump problem, because sitting here at idle, it's been right there between like 577, 580 at idle. And as the temp's gone up, that has not dropped. So I'm going to turn it off. It will probably be a little bit of a long start still because whenever you open this system up or air test it, you're going to have a long start till you go really drive this thing and put it through its paces. So let's see if she'll crank back up. So now we just got to go drive it, purge the air out of the system and double check that it is still good to go and we don't have a crank and it'll start hot anymore. So like I've told people, IPR is a wear item. Uh, they're exposed to a lot of heat. That was a motor craft when we took off, so it might be the original one. Uh, screen was stuck in there. It had some trash on it, not a lot. I've seen way worse, of course. So it may have just been time for it to go. All right, she is not cut off. I've got her totally up to temp, but look at these oil temps. Oil temp is freaking, what is that? Uh, 17 degrees higher than the coolant temp. I'm not happy with that. And he's only had the truck three years. He doesn't know the status of the oil cooler, but he's gonna quiz the buddy he bought the truck from, so. She's running good. True test, does it crank right up hot? Still fires right up, so problem fixed. And uh, we gotta get his oil cooler and manifold gaskets. I think that's all we gotta do. Coolant, I gotta go get some VC9 from Ford and we'll be doing an oil cooler on this thing, get his oil temps down. All right guys, so we got the crank no start fix with replacing the IPR, put a quality motorcraft IPR back on it. Uh, I talked to the customer, I said, hey, your oil temps are high. I said, it's only gonna create more problems. And I don't know if y'all have ever seen one of these start melting the stuff that's in the oil cooler housing there when the oil temps just keep going up and up and up because the system can't compensate for that high oil temp and try to cool it back down when the oil cooler is getting stopped up. So we're gonna go on and put another OEM, Motorcraft, USA made oil cooler in here and uh, replace that and get him back on the road because it's running fine now, but the oil temps are high. Uh, Y'all saw that on the computer. I think when I pulled back up here, coolant temp was 205, oil temp was 222, 223, and that's unloaded, and that's only going on about a five or six mile drive around the block here. Now, granted, I drove it hard, but that was only on a five or six mile drive to get it up that high. So you know, if you start putting a trailer behind this, you drive it hard, pulling some hills, it's going to go up even more from that and start causing even more problems. So, anyways, y'all check out other content on the channel here. Whole lot of power stroke stuff. We're here if y'all need us to work on your power stroke. Contact info is on the website. Go follow us on Facebook and Instagram. If this channel has helped you fix your truck, save you some money, or you just want to support our content here on the channel, consider visiting our Patreon and becoming a member of that. We got some behind the scenes stuff that we can't put on, on uh, YouTube here. And uh, we do giveaways at times also. But anyways, we appreciate y'all watching. We appreciate you subscribing. 
It's Automatic Garage signing out. We'll talk to y'all later.